Okay. Welcome everyone to the Triad Microsoft Data User Group. Um, thanks for joining tonight. Um, we are part of the Azure Data Azure Data community. Um, so there is a collection of user groups across the country and across the globe that are that fall underneath the data community. So um, if you head out to aka.ms.data community, you can find all different events and things going on. Um, so it's uh, give it a give it a watch for some good stuff. Um, so there's some upcoming um, sessions. So this is from the SQLSaturday.com site. They do a good job of sort of mm -hmm. collating everything. So you can see some stuff, stuff coming up um, as well. Um, let me see, 8KB is um, a really good level 400, 500 um, conference. And so definitely give that a listen to. And all the data Saturday is coming up as well. So um, let's see, a lot of, or most of the SQL pass um, sessions are now underneath pass TV. So Redgate bought most of the assets and they made them all public. So going back to Josh, I think 2014, 2013, you can see all the sessions. So um, if you want to reference anything, a ton of great content out there. And then all of our stuff is on the uh, YouTube channel. Um, you can just search for Triad Data Platform User Group. You'll find us out there. And we have all our recordings. And then some of the um, <clears throat> pro sessions of SQL Pass, the old SQL Pass, are now um, an educational series underneath Redgate's University. So they're all free. Um, and so take a listen over, or watch some videos over there, some really good stuff um, from um, Azure and performance tuning as well. Um, Tech Systems is one of our sponsors. So if you're interested in finding a job or looking for people to hire, um, we've, I work at Elon University and we've used Tech Systems in the past to find some really good hires. So they do a good job screening folks for us. Um, and there's, um, Lots of uh, lots of jobs right now um, open in the IT industry and, and everywhere. Really, it's it's a good time to be looking for a, a new job. Uh, we have other sponsors: O'Reilly, Pearl Sight, and A Press. A lot of these folks have trials, whether it's seven day, ten day, thirty day trials. You can sign up. Um, a lot of the SQL Server folks will write books underneath the A Press title and O'Reilly has a ton of programming options and Pluralsight has some amazing um, SQL Server content, um, both in the cloud and um, on premises as well. So good stuff there. And Safari Books Online, um, similar to A Press, A Press has an online bookstore. Um, you can sign up for a subscription on um, this is a 10 day free trial. Um, for some of their stuff, if you're looking to learn some new stuff. And I'd like to uh, welcome Tim. Um, so he's going to be talking to us about Azure Purview and what sort of the data catalog and data classification is all about. So I will stop sharing and you can fire away. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for having me, Doug. I appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to leave my video on for a little bit, but I'm going to turn it off when I really start to talk because I, uh, I tend to look at myself uh, yeah. when I'm talking. So I'm going to, I'm going to not do that. Oh, did I? Yep. Okay. Screen looks, I can see the slide deck. Yeah, it okay, looks good. Very good. Very good. Very good. So, hey, welcome. Uh, thanks for uh, having me. Um, I've um, gotten into a little bit of chat with Doug and shared some more stories about uh, user groups and uh, user group activities in the pandemic and uh when are, what are our thoughts on going back uh, you know after the pandemic's over so a lot of a lot of a lot of different opinions i'm sure everybody has oh so today we're going to talk about azure purview which is a product that's in preview on the um the azure suite of products and really it helps you tie in all of your data on your on your on-prem data amazon data uh azure cloud data SAP data, uh, Office 365 data, helps you pull all that in and, 
and classify it, to build a common glossary, to glean any type of data insights around that common data structure. Side note, if you, if you hear a dog, and I do right now, if you hear a dog barking in the background, um, I apologize. We're trying to train a, a yellow lab puppy and she's obviously not being good right now. So I, I really apologize. I'm gonna shut my uh, video off. One second. Stop my video. Only because I, like I said, I'll just look at myself. So again, I'm Tim McLilly. I work for Microsoft. I've been with Microsoft about nine years. I have 22 plus years in IT. I started uh, with SQL 6065. I know those products were on the tail end in 1999, but I worked for a, um, uh, a law and accounting software firm um, uh, called CMS Data. It later became Adirant Solutions, Solution 6 and Adirant back in 1999 and doing like uh, SQL Server support and report builder support. It was a nightmare. <laughs> then uh, uh, I live in the DC area. Uh, about 30 miles outside of DC. Um, hold on one second. Well, no, nah, we'll deal with the dog. Uh, hold on. Hey guys, can we do something with the dog? I'm sorry about that. I really couldn't take it after a while. I was like, oh my gosh, will this dog shut up? We love her to death, but man. Uh, favorite show, TV, movie? I would like to, I'd like to say that I read a lot. I read the New York Times. I read newspapers and articles and things like that, but I don't really read any books. I would love to say I read books. Anyway, my favorite TV show is always Sunny in Philadelphia and Saturday Night Live. And then I love, love college football. Florida State is my, my college that I went to. I, I'm supposed to be a fan of Florida State and I like them kind of, but I really like uh, University of Alabama for sure. And then anything after that. I love you know, I love good ACC games on a Saturday or heck I was watching Coastal Carolina uh, go almost undefeated last year. That was fun. So uh, anyway, and then I spent a lot of time with my family uh, as far as a, a big hobby. My specialty is, I know I'm reading this out of order. My specialty is SQL Server and then, uh, and then Azure Data Services. Um, and then I'm a, a customer engineer with Microsoft, which is really the, the um, evolved term uh, from premier field engineer. Basically you go into a customer side or you work with customers on a transactional basis for issues and troubleshooting or maybe like a best practices session or even delivering a multi-day workshop. Um, either, like I said, transactionally or in a dedicated level, 200 hours, 400 hours, 800 hours, something like that. Um, here's my contact info. Feel free to uh, hit me up on LinkedIn and say that, hey, you know, I met you at the the meetup. Uh, there's my Twitter and then my user group Twitter. I have a um, uh, Sys Frameworks is my personal Twitter and then Nova SQLs for the meetup. And then the meetup address that I run um, is uh, the Northern Virginia uh, data platform meetup. And like Doug, we changed our meetup name from SQL Server user group to data platform meetup. It just seemed like it would be more broad and gear us up towards different and more topics. So we've had topics like AI and ML. Matter of fact, we just did a conference on Friday. It was a single track, five session uh, conference from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We had five speakers, but the topics were all around AI and machine learning. Um, and we'll do another one in the fall. And then we, the topics might be around data engineering or something around Azure data, but less on AI and ML. There's my email right there. And we're always looking for talent. Um, so go out to careers.microsoft.com and, and if you see something interesting, go ahead and apply and um, who knows, uh, I believe one of the, the, the participants in tonight's meeting is a new hire at Microsoft, so we congratulate him and um, uh, I know you're looking forward to a good time at Microsoft. So let's talk about uh, Azure Purview and, and what it can do for you now, forgive me. Azure Purview is in preview. So it's not a generally available product yet. You sign up for the preview, you get the preview resources, you get the preview interface. A lot of stuff is not set in stone yet. 
for example, pricing on the the uh, some of the the Azure purview features. It's that's not all set. We we have some gen, we have a general idea of what it, maybe it would cost and things like that. Now also, as and you'll see that in the demo, I have two different purview environments. I have a I have a sort of a company issued purview environment that's missing a couple pieces because permissions related to you know handing out a, a purview resource. So there's a couple of things like the the uh, data sources area that I don't have permissions on, but I also have my own purview account. So we're gonna look at the Azure side of my purview account through the Azure portal and see what that looks like. And then we're gonna look at the my purview studio for some things. Then we're gonna look at the, the uh, demo purview studio for things. So a couple of, of views, plus I've got this slide deck is broken into let's say 20 slides of Hello, how you doing? This is part of you, marketing, marketing. But then there's a level 300 appendix that has screenshots, um, very technical around the Azure Purview Studio and what each button means and what each feature means. So if there's something I don't cover tonight, I'll still pass out the slide. I'll make sure Doug gets the slides um, and you can go back and look at that and reference it. Also, there's uh, a reference to the main purview product page off of the Azure portal. You're going to want to take a look at that. And then there is uh, the documentation for the uh, for Azure purview. And you definitely want to go take a look at that because that's got tutorials and walkthroughs, uh, concept guides, how to's and not take, you know, don't don't uh, pass that that material by. So, you know, I won't read all this for you. Uh, but what is Azure purview? What is it? Um, because it, you know, because this had been our um, data dictionary product in Azure, and I remember I don't know if you guys know, but uh, Karen Lopez came to one of my events that we were running in um, uh, Malvern, Pennsylvania, and she did a presentation on Azure Data Dictionary and talked about Azure Data Dictionary and be able to, to uh, consolidate your data. Uh, uh, set up things like uh, classification and figure out where the data came from and get insights from that. Well, Purview is an evolution of that. So, you know, it's a unified data governance service. It truly is in terms of the data that the, the data that can, can access and pull into Azure. Uh, Purview is amazing. And what's nice is, is that the data that it touches is not affected. There's not a a performance hit because of a purview scan. Purview does store data, but in its own um, blob storage inside of Azure under the purview account for metadata and metadata only. So data about data. Um, the three main areas that we'll look at tonight are the data map, the data catalog and the data insights, but we will also focus on uh, the management area, so you can see what what, what can you manage. Uh, there's a security aspect. There is a you know what technologies got that data there. You know what part of a, a data pipeline pulled that data into pur uh, Purview. Uh, we'll also take a look at you know creating new classifications and things like that. So we will go into the management area as well. So right now we're in public preview, and I put in I uh, put this in in italicies, and this is. As of today, uh, you know, it's anticipated that it'll be generally available in the late summer. And notice I didn't say late August, I didn't say early September, just late summer, it's supposed to be. And I got that from um, uh, sort of a product group blog post today. So we'll just take their word for it and still kind of mess around in their public preview for um, Azure Purview. Now, if you are, I mean, if you already have a data dictionary product or a data cataloging product, that's fine. I mean, uh, uh, this this might not be as fully mature as things like, and I'll rattle them off, Calibra, Informatica, Google Data Catalog, Alation, IBM Watson Knowledge Center. But uh, one thing that, you, that I've noticed in terms of maybe a competitive edge or competitive aspect, when we look at what is available in Azure Purview, that's a total product. It's kind of like SQL Server, right? 
you can get reporting services, SSIS, SSAS, and the data engine without additional costs. You buy that enterprise uh, license with software assurance and you're golden for everything. This is kind of the same with Azure Purview. A lot of the Calibra Informatica elation specifically as add-on costs for things you need to add on. Like if there's an insights area that we'll look at and with elation and Calibra, uh, you have to pay for the add-on piece. Also, they're not, uh, particularly for with uh, Calibra and elation, it's hard to get pricing. Like, well, how much do you charge for this? And I say this on a very shallow stump because we're not really um, hardcore concrete on our pricing yet, but, but we do have a pricing calculator and a pricing roadmap for you to look at. But, um, but I would say the adding on components and then pricing visibility are absolutely competitive areas that you might wanna think about if you, if you don't have a data cataloging solution and you've got stuff on Azure and you just want to keep it all in one spot, that would be fine. Uh, IBM Watson, they do a lot of bundling, uh, a lot of products, uh, their data map or their data catalog, their data insights are all kind of bundled together. And, and, and what you'll notice, or I guess you'll surmise is that the bigger you are as a company, like IBM or Google, the more you can afford to bundle a lot of stuff. So I'll just leave you with that in terms of Big company can bundle a lot. Smaller company can't really bundle a lot. Smaller company has to charge you for add-ons. Big companies can pile everything in the trunk, uh, all the groceries, and tell you to, to drive off. So that's, that's my two cents on that. Bear with me on about, bear with me on a few marketing slides. Hey, raise your hand, say, I swear, Tim, we'll bear with you. Um, again, the reason you're talking about a, a product like Azure Purview, and again, I'll be very gentle and quick on these marketing slides and we'll get into a demo. Um, this is because you have all this data and you have all these corporations that cite in their strategies uh, about the criticality of information and how much information they're putting out. Uh, 175 zettabytes by 2025 is expected to be generated annually. So that's a lot of data. And so what do you do with that data? If you're a, for example, in this slide, if you're a chief data officer, what's your, what's your perspective on data discovery? What data do I have? Where did that data come from? Can I trust it? Who built that, who built that spreadsheet that an entire accounting department is uh, leveraging its next decision on? And then compliance. I mean, am I at risk? Uh, is my usage, how am I using this data? Am I it's putting personal information out there or credit card information or social security information. How am I protecting that data? How do I control access and use? And then what regulatory framework do I fall under? So those are the challenges um, uh, encountered by the chief data officer. And then in terms of data governance, you know, it's becoming increasingly uh, interdisciplinary. Everybody has to kind of take a little bit of that data, chief data officer uh, responsibility pie, so to speak, and, sh and have a little for themselves in terms of what is my role in making sure that I have a discovery and compliance strategy for the data that, that I am in my department. Are there any questions at this point? Any comments? I know we've got some just some real quick marketing slides. Elements of successful data governance. You need to be able to manage your growing data landscape. Uh, everybody says, it's, I mean, it's almost, a, you should almost trademark this, overcome operational silos. That is, that's still a problem because you have these departments that have uh, no interdepartmental inter, interreaction or react, uh, relationships. So they've become siloed in their data and their operations. Um, you want to increase your data agility. And then of course you want to make sure you're compliant. So those are successful, are elements of successful data governance. You want to manage growth, break down the silos, make sure you can grow and be flexible, and then make sure you comply with whatever framework uh, falls in your, your, your organization. So with Azure uh, Data Governance, it allows you to do this. 
It allows you to reimagine what your data could look like or does look like in the cloud. It can get uh, data out on Amazon S3. It can get data on Postgres servers running in Amazon. It can get on-prem SQL Server. It can get Power BI. Uh, I can get SAS. I'll show you the um, when we step through the demo. Um, it sets the foundation for effective data governance. It helps to maximize the value of data for data customers. You can get insights or um, maybe figure out non-obvious relationships between data that you hadn't thought through before. Uh, gain strategic insight into data across the entire data estate of your organization. Maybe you have a department that's really uh, kicking butt in one metric and that metric is indirectly driving another metric. Well, this will help you um, maybe see the relationship that maybe you hadn't seen before. Being able to reimagine data governance in the cloud. Again, you can manage analytical data, transactional operational data. So you can pull data out of SQL servers. You can pull data out of uh, Azure Synapse Analytics, uh, SQL Data Warehouse. Um, you can do uh, cloud native purpose built services to address uh, discovering compliance needs. Uh, it's fully managed, it's a PaaS service. Um, and it eliminates, it eliminates that one person who has a data dictionary that's built in a spreadsheet that's stored, not even on a OneDrive, but on some enterprise shared disk somewhere, these homegrown solutions that can be helpful, but they can also, <laughs> they can also be a bit dangerous, right? A little bit more on uh, the foundation for effective data governance, the discovery of data whether it's on-prem or in the cloud or your SAS sources, needs to be automated. You can set up automated scans that are very detailed. You can include or exclude uh, data elements. You can look for file types. You can classify data at scale uh, and set sensitivity based on maybe what it sees. Like if it sees a social security column or it sees a um, credit card column or PII, some type of information, it can classify that at scale. Um, and then it gives you uh, a lineage perspective and you can see where data came from and what was derived to it with uh, uh, what was derived from it with dated lineage. So we'll see in the demo, we'll see know, an Azure SQL table or an Azure SQL database and a table in that database. And we'll see what that data is being used to uh, produce and where that data came from. Um, you can maximize business value of data. So really showing users in your organization the true value of their data, showing how quickly they can find it and use semantic terms to query the data catalog to say, I need all, all, you know, I need sales orders or something like that and just deliver that query semantically and then get um, a, a good query result that's meaningful that they can dig through. And then you can gain insight into the data to use across your estate. Take, take a look at just a quick glance of how data is being used by file extension, uh, the amount of data that you have, the amount of assets that you have, and you can really visually look at this data and, and consider, you know, you can make decisions based on what you see. Uh, just a real quick customer spotlight. I'll pass through this. By the way, you'll get these slides. Um, so again, we'll take a look at the data map, the data catalog and data insights. Remember, we're going to switch between a couple of different purview accounts. We'll use the internal Microsoft demo purview account, which because of permissions and all this, did I sound cynical? Sorry, but because of permissions, but they don't really need to be, they don't need people going and making changes to the data. So I get it. <laughs> we'll look at the demo purview piece, then we'll look at my purview account to, um, to see things like the data map, um, data catalog and data insights. So this is the three areas we'll look, plus we'll look at insights and man, oh, plus we'll look at management, sorry. Um, the data map, you can literally see by, um, uh, collection 
and resource the types of data you have. And you can see that here on the screen. Uh, you can apply sensitivity levels. You can set up scanning schedules. Um, there's a uh, hundred plus built-in classifiers for the types of data that you can uh, reach out and get. It's amazing. And um, once you set this up and set up an automatic scan schedule, you really don't have to touch it again because as the data is updated on the source end, it automatically triggers maybe a need for a rescan in case there's been some fundamental data changes, it'll pick those up um, on subsequent rescans. Very powerful tool. Uh, we'll also take a look at the, <clears throat> the data catalog. We'll talk about, or we'll show you, basically we'll show you semantic search and browsing. We'll take a look at the glossaries and workflows and data lineage. And then really when we dig in, we'll take a look at um, the data insights and you can look at maybe assets. An asset is an artifact that's in your, your purview account. It's, it's scanned, it's pulled in. Uh, we'll talk about the scans themselves, which is a run against the data, um, of the data sources. Um, we'll look at the glossary classification, sensitivity labels, and file extensions. Anyway, so I'll, I'll wrap this piece up, but th this is what you can hit just at a thousand foot view uh, with Azure Purview. You can do the Power Platform stuff, Microsoft Azure data sources, multiple cloud, hybrid, SaaS data, operational analytic data, Microsoft uh, 365 data, and SQL Server. Let me, let's go to the demo real quick. Oh, what, let me just, let me show you real, this real quick. I'm sorry. So I did mention we are in preview, but here are some things uh, in this, uh, this slide was pulled down this week. These are things that are available right now in preview. Um, and the preview is public, it's not a private preview. Private preview is when you get your account team, your Microsoft account team to reach out to the product group and you sign up for the private preview and the account, the product team coordinates with you to give you access to the private preview, but this is public. Uh, so automatic scanning of hybrid sources, classification, uh, Microsoft Information Protection, Sensitivity Label Support, Apache Atlas IP API support for the data map, for the Purview Catalog. There's some, that's what's available now right here. Semantic Search, Business Glossary, Data Lineage, and then the ability to connect to an Azure Synapse workspace. And that's important because that's our Azure Data Warehouse product that's now has been relabeled Synapse. It's been over a year, but it's, it's been relabeled Synapse. And that's got a a SQL pool, as well as a Spark pool for the, the main data sources. And you can also go serverless with it. It's not a Synapse session, but you can connect to a Synapse workspace. For data insights, you can look at assets and scans. Uh, you can look at glossary reports, classification and labeling, and then asset level drill down by sensitivity. And we will take a look at that. So I'm gonna stop with the slides right here and I'm going to do this. This is the level 300 appendix to this. So this is going to show you, you know, uh, this isn't that bad of a slide. Let me, this is kind of the overview, the technical first salvo, if you will, for Azure Purview. Um, here is the Azure Purview high level interface. The, it's a unified experience. You have data catalog, data insights, data map. And then underneath that, you've got on-prem and multi-cloud data sources, as well as operational, analytical, and SaaS data sources uh, with, with data insights. Um, uh, you can pull data from or push data into Power BI, SQL Server on-prem, Azure Synapse, Azure Data Services, uh, M365 Compliance Center, uh, open APIs for Apache Atlas 2.0. With your data catalog, you search, you can do your, your business glossary, you can see lineage. Um, with your data map, you can look at data assets, lineage and classifications, automatic scanning and classification. This slide's not too terribly bad. Remember it's, uh, it's right here after, we, after I insert that slide and say, hey, level 300. Here's a little bit more um, 
on the features at public preview. This is the Azure Purview Studio, and this is a good time to kind of jump off here in a second and go into the demo. So basically all this around here is data sources, multi or on-prem and multi-cloud, operational analytical SaaS, open API, Power BI, SQL Server on-prem, Synapse, Azure Data Services, uh, M365 Compliance Center, Purview Catalog, Purview Data Insight, Purview uh, Catalog included with the uh, platform if you pay for it at a certain level. I don't know if the, um, what level of preview uh, you have to be at C1, which is catalog one or catalog zero. And I know that with preview, you do get uh, data insight one, which is a, a performance and capability tier when you see C1 and CO. And we'll take a look at the pricing and I'll explain that. But let's, are there any questions right now? No? Okay. Well, let's jump over to the demo and we will, um, oh, one thing, one last thing in the slides. And I just wanna show you this most important thing uh, on your own, go out to microsoft.docs.microsoft.com uh, forward slash, you know, the little ENUS uh, to take a look at the Purview website. And then also the, uh, the main product website uh, off of azure.microsoft.com. So do take a look at that. All right, I'm gonna shut down the slides. All right, so let's take a look at Purview. So what we're here, what we're looking at right now is the Azure portal. And I've got my Purview, my demo Purview one account. And um, it's basically telling me some simple information around the resource group. And uh, if there was any tags, I would apply those, but it's showing me something we will get back into, and that is the pricing level, um, per view account, platform size, four capacity units with catalog zero plus C1, uh, C0 plus C1, and that are, those are the preview level offerings for what uh, you can see, and it kind of listed that out on the slide, and then data insights, uh, data insights zero, and that's a pricing and performance level. From here, I can open up the Purview Studio, which I'll do in just a second, look at more documentation or manage users. Um, a lot of people say, you know, where is the data stored in Azure Purview? Oops, I was telling Doug before we started, I said, <laughs> I mess with Zoom, but I can't really. Anyway, if you look at the manage resource group name, the storage account name, and the event hub namespace, Event Hub sends the data into storage, but if you look at the storage account for the Purview, uh, demo Purview account for the, for the account I'm, I have here, it's really, it's all private blobs, not accessible. No reason for you to, to go into these blob storage accounts because only the, the Purview engine can really interpret them and make sense out of them. But that's where the data is stored, if anyone asks you. Where is Purview data stored? Mostly in blob storage um, inside of your Purview account. And then, you know, you guys have probably seen this. This is all the stuff along the, the, the left-hand side of, the, of an Azure resource. Activity log, access control, tags, diagnose and solve problems, networking properties. All right. So let's go out to open uh, Azure or uh, Purview Studio. Now here's where, just not, I don't wanna get you guys confused or anything like that, but I do have two Azure Purview Studios that we're gonna work with tonight. Here is Contoso, uh, DXY, and that is a Contoso um, Purview account for demo demonstrating stuff to customers at Microsoft. It is missing a couple of things, and I'll show you. Notice data catalog, glossary, insights, and data management. You know, if you're an administrator, you can set up permissions on what your users can see. So you can, if you have people who, if you configure a Purview account in Azure and you want to go and uh, limit what someone can do in Azure, you'd give them a, 
some type of permission set that's similar to this. Now here is my purview account that I configured. And it's a little bit different. Notice the data map now appears. And then inside each of these categories, you'll see less and less of choices per se. So um, for management, you know, there's, a, there's, there's these choices for the demo Microsoft's customer facing purview piece. I, I know the presentation is not about that, but I'm just trying to give you, but here's mine. You get a couple of pieces around, you get an extra button for security and access. You get lineage connections, pattern rules and things like that. So just note that as we go through this, cause you might see me bounce around a lot. So we don't need the, um, the uh, Azure portal uh, uh, purview account piece anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut that. And then I have some additional links up here for pricing and we'll get to uh, pricing and, and overall documentation. But let's take a look at the uh, data catalog piece of purview. So we'll go here, uh, here in purview and notice you get a knowledge center that has learning materials and tutorials. You can browse assets and an asset is a, a collection with data under it, basically. It's, it's, it's captured some type of asset. So I'll switch back. And you can also view your glossary. And a glossary is a you know, set of terms. It's a common set of business terms that maybe your organization's agreed upon. There's a set of custom glossary terms and then a set of system default glossary terms. And you can... Uh, set up a way to where you can define these glossary terms to where they make sense. Uh, you can set them up to, uh, to, to maybe have some type of common language across your organization. That's ideally what they're for. In the uh, top part of here of the uh, uh, Azure Purview pane, it's telling me how many assets and how many glossary terms I have. And then recently accessed um, uh, documents and then maybe my items with some links over here off to the, the uh, right. But I'm gonna go and let's say I'm gonna grab uh, just, you can search on anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and search on sales order header and notice along the, uh, the left side here, you get the asset type. It's found uh, sales order header in data lake storage gen two. It found sales order header in SQL database it found it in Amazon RDS SQL, and it found it in Synapse Analytics. It found classifications uh, uh, for a number of things. It found contacts, and we'll, I'll show you what contacts is and where you put that. And then it found uh, a set of glossary terms that you can filter on as well if you needed to filter on address or something like that. But we're just gonna take a look at uh, Azure. Um, let's see. We'll take a look at the sales order header table here. And again, this is a search off of the main data catalog on the, the landing page, if you will, of um, Azure Purview. And notice right here, you get the overview section, really no description for the asset, but if there was a description, you could say, you know, this is our, our, our table that uh, talks about sales information. There's really no classifications for the, the asset. You can see that there's schema classifications. And again, this is kind of where we get into the, my own purview account versus the demo pur purview account because the demo purview account has a lot of data in it. It's easier to show. And, but there's a lot of things that I can't make changes to even show you where you could make a change. Um, whereas mine has the ability, but I don't have a lot of data plugged in. But anyway, you could see the classifications. You could see the fully qualified domain or the fully qualified name for the data source. This is in an Azure SQL database. AdventureWorks sales order header. 
You can see the hierarchy here. It comes from an Azure SQL database, or an Azure SQL server, Azure SQL database, the sales LT table, the sales order header table. If you go into properties, you can see um, when this asset was created in purview, not when it was created as a, a table in an Azure SQL database. It can show you the last time that asset was modified, the type of object, principal ID, again, the, you have the qualified name. I would open Power BI Desktop, but I don't have permissions on the data sources. So you just get a lot of weird permission errors. Again, another little shot at schema. We saw a schema here when we wanted to see more. Lineage, the lineage is kind of cool. And what Lineage is showing you in a graphic way is there's the sales or a table. It tells you pretty much everything about it, that it, there's the server, there's the database, there's the table. It's part of a Azure data factory copy activity where it's going using, oops, sorry, where it's using Azure data factory and it's copying that from Azure SQL into Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. And here's the action right here where it's saying, hey, copy this data, or this data is being copied into um, Azure Data Lake Storage. And what it's doing is, is giving you an idea of where this data starts and where this data is winding up. If this data uh, had some presentation on a Power BI reporting side, if it was feeding into analytic reports, it would have that extra step in the lineage. And you can also do, you can look at columns to see where these columns are being shipped. What does go through, what doesn't go through, things like that with the lineage piece. Any questions about lineage? We'll, we'll take a look at lineage again um, when we go into management because what drives this, this is really Azure Data Factory that's doing the metadata scanning to pull information about these pipelines and things like that. Does it, um, the lineage, does it reach into stored procedures and views as well? I don't know if it reaches into stored procedures. I think it, it's just looking at base tables, I believe. I don't think it looks at store procedures because that's more of a programmatic element like a store procedure or a function. Um, it might hit views, but I'll check on that, Doug. That's a good question. Okay, thanks. Sure. And then here's contacts and there's not a lot of contacts here, but you can see if there was an expert or an owner for this as asset, it would be listed here um, in the contacts area. And then you can see related uh, information. And so this really just shows uh, the tables that are involved in are related to the sales, um, the sales order header table. So we'll go back up here. And just real quick, <laughs> there's not a lot of, like a lot of data to show in my demo purview. That's why I didn't want to jump through that. So let's go, let's do switch now into my Azure Data Purview um, account. And let's take a look at a data map. And here is just a map view of a collection. A collection is a collection of, of registered data sources. So I have here, I have Data Lake Storage, Azure Synapse Analytics, I have a blob in another collection, but also a child collection of the main collection. I have Azure SQL MI, and then I have another collection with nothing in it. And then at the storage level, or it's not the storage level, but at the, the asset level, you can kick off a new scan. I, I won't go any further than this because I, I really haven't done a lot of work on my own account piece. And I'll show you back on the other preview, the other purview area, how this is not even available to me. But you, this is where you kick off a scan against your data. And then once you kick off that scan, you can set it up to scan it automatically um, to track changes or uh, maybe a periodic scan. So it could be a change-based or time-based scan. Um, 
there is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there's the, the Synapse Analytic data source. Again, I won't hit the scan piece, but you can pull the type of database that you want to run. You can, well, you can use a uh, managed identity or you can use a credential that's stored in Azure Vault. I'll hit exit out of that. And then what's also cool is that if you wanted to do, let's say register a new data source, this is what I really want to show you. You can take a look here at all the different registered data, the data sources you can register. Um, all the different uh, data types, data repositories in Azure from, from um, Synapse Analytic, Blob Storage, Cosmos, uh, Azure Data Explorer, uh, Data Lake Storage Gen 1 and 2, MySQL, Postgres, um, um, a dedicated SQL pool inside of Synapse, Azure Files, Azure SQL Database, Managed Instance, um, Hive, Metastore, Oracle, SQL Server on-prem, Teradata, Power BI, and then uh, SAP, HANA, and uh, ECC. So, and, and we're getting more data, by the way. We're getting more, um, we're getting more data types. So I would assume, oops, excuse me. So I would assume at preview, uh, or once public preview is over, we'll have more uh, data types you can connect to for sure. But this is kind of all of them right now for the preview as it exists. All right, so I'm gonna flip back over and let's take a look at glossary. And we'll do, two, we'll, again, I don't wanna confuse, but I'm having to flip between the two. With the glossary, this is where you go ahead and set up terms that your organization is gonna use and how you define account number. What does account number mean to your organization? How do you um, define an account number? What are the, the, the numbers associated with it? What assets are we gonna associate with account number? What are some synonyms for account number? What are some child terms for account number? What are some of the catalog assets tied in with account number, which is what data that's been scanned by Azure Purview has account number information in it that we've defined. And you can see if you're, if you're trying to build a report and you're looking through um, these asset types or classifications or even these contexts, you might want to ask these people here, hey, I notice you have this data asset and I'd like to learn more about it. I mean, sometimes you, sometimes that's the best way to work. Uh, or what, in, in terms of glossary terms, who is using account number? You can also, and this is where I'm going to flip back over to my um, uh, my purview account. You can also set up new terms. You can use a term template or use the system default. You can also manage term templates using the system term templates or the custom term templates. here. So Glossary is pretty powerful. It's a way for you to define data types and have a common language set for your organization. So let's take a look at insights. Two things here. We'll start at the bottom of the, well, no, we'll go ahead and start at the top. So with this insight window, it's telling me, hey, you've got uh, 17 different source types. You've got 44,000 different discovered assets and you've got uh, 631 assets that have fallen under a classification. And then asset count per source type for all classification categories. 
Or you can say, hey, I just want to see what's government or what's personal or financial or miscellaneous. You might want to pull back, okay, we've got these different classifications. Driver's license number, personal identifiers based on the country of origin for the, the maybe the person that's in the record, zip codes, things like that. But this is all classifications and all classification categories. And you can see within data lake storage, you've got um, 30,000. In blob storage, you've got 12,000. In your SQL pools, you've got 267. And it does this count and, and so on. So we'll go into um, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Can we drill into it? No, let's see, a few more. You can drill right into Azure Data Lake Storage. And you can see the assets per file type here in a backup area. There's uh, a lot of data. So we'll switch down here. And it's showing you what's in these, uh, what's in data lake storage. It's showing you what's in these file paths. And it's showing you that, I don't know if you can see it at the bottom of the screen. You know, I'm showing you roughly 380 records that it's dealing with. here. Then it's showing you uh, file-based source types. XML, Parquet, CSV, DSV, TXT, ZIP, DAT, Backpack, a lot of different file extensions. So you can look at file-based source types. You can look at size trend in the gigabyte uh, unit of measurement of a file type within source types. You can say what files are not associated with a resource set. For scans, you can take a look at um, scans, how many scans are successful, how many have been canceled, how many failed. You can do view more. And you can see what specific scan name and the source and get more information about maybe uh, what failed and kind of dig in. Oh, excuse me. See? Need permission to do that. You can get information about uh, glossary. You can look at the top terms by count of assets. Sort of a little uh, word storm here. You can look at total terms, approved terms without assets, expired terms with assets. terms with assets, incomplete terms. And that's things like maybe they're missing an information around the definition or the, the expert or the steward or missing multiple items. Uh, overview of different sources with classification. So there might be 39 subscriptions. There might be 134 unique classifications found. There might be 60 sources that are classified and 809 files that are classified and then 98 different tables that are classified. Then top sources with classified data in the past 30 days. Thirty-three here in uh, Data Lake Gems 2, Azure Blob Storage, SQL Database, so forth. Top classification categories by resource. Top classification for files. Let's kind of drill into that just to take a look. And 
And you can see the, uh, the GUID for Maromi products has a classification. And you can see the type of files that it hit that uh, qualified for that classification level. Passport number, zip codes, state name, UK driver's license, all that stuff that relate to some type of classification, probably PII. Sensitivity labels. No sensitivity labels. File extensions. You can see the top file extensions uh, based on CSV, Parquet, TXT, Snappy, or Zip. I believe you can view, view more. Yeah. And see how many files uh, are out there for CSVs. Parquet, TXT. Tim, have you done anything with SSIS um, packages inside of Purview? Well, oh, good question. Let me show you these, these this one area here. So we'll 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 hop out of insights. We'll go into management, and then we'll take a look at Azure Data Factory instead of SSIS, which uh, handles the the inbound data being pumped into Purview. Okay, thanks. So, yeah, so you can use Data Share or you can use Data Factory. And again, I, this is my Purview account. Uh, you can set up an integration runtime, which will go out and pump data into your Azure uh, Purview account. But pump metadata, by the way, it'll. It'll uh, handle all the, the scans and all that kind of stuff. But I don't believe it's SSIS. It's um, Azure Data Factory, which is the, the, the big brother, so to speak, of uh, SSIS. Thanks your question. Yes, yes. We, we have a lot of SSIS packages, and we have not started using Data Factory yet. And I was just curious, because of the lineage, it would be nice to see all those packages sort of mapped out. You know, I, you know, that let, let me kind of back up then. I wonder if you had an on-prem SQL server that was the target for a lot of data transferal from SSIS packages, what you would see if you scanned an on-prem SQL server database that was receiving a lot of data through SSIS packages. I'm not sure. I will, I will, I will ask about that. Um, uh, right after this meeting's over, because I don't know for sure, um, but you should be able to see it in your lineage. From but let me let me look real quick. Uh, if I do that, I'll get I'll get thrown off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doug. That's a good question, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure, but I will find out. No worries. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. So here in the management, you get account information. Scan your rule sets. You can do uh, new rule sets where you can go in, set up the, the source type of your rule set, name it, and do things like... Um, uh, uh, exclude or include certain files. Uh, you can set up, you can run system scans. You can run custom scans. Uh, you can set up your integration runtimes to, to uh, feed the data for your lineage. Uh, you can look at metrics, but you have to jump out to Azure Monitor, which is a whole other thing. Um, you can set up classifications, do new classifications. You can set up uh, classification rules, which is how the system takes a look and classifies data based on the classifications you've set. So it follows these rules. Uh, resource, uh, excuse me, pattern rules underneath resource uh, uh, sets. And these pattern rules help you figure out uh, how you're gonna group together your assets and resource sets and how they're, they're displayed. And then data factory, of course, and data share are your data sources. And then access control and credentials are key in 
and setting up what a user can do on the demo, or excuse me, on the Azure Purview tenant. And notice, I don't even get that little button right there for uh, credentials in the, the Microsoft tenant. But anyway, guys, hey, it's uh, I'm at an hour. <laughs> to be honest, with you, I've got a hard stop because I'm actually taking a class on Tuesday and Thursday, and uh, it starts at six. <laughs> it starts at six thirty, so I told them I'd be late. But uh, are there any questions about Azure Purview? There was one more. Um, Bob wants to know how does it determine the parameters of what to scan when you go in and do your scanning. Uh, when you go in and set up your data map and you go in and say, hey, I want to set up some rules around scanning. I want you to include these elements and exclude these elements. It's very granular when you set up your scan to where you can determine what parameters you're going to scan. Great. Well, great. Well, th Tim, thank you so much for yeah. your um overview of purview and it's got some cool stuff in it the lineage looks really neat um, yes yeah, something a, we've been looking for it's a neat product uh it, so you know microsoft does a lot of stuff that gets you 75 percent there 80 percent there but because it's built in you might as well try it so and i've, I've run into that as an nt administrator <laughs> windows 2000 administrator, you know like back in the old days so this is kind of uh, a grown-up version of that i mean it's it's an evolving product, it's, it's in preview, it'll get better, uh, but it's certainly worth a shot. I mean, with the data catalog, the data map, and the, um, the insights glossary and the flexibility you have with the, the management section, it's certainly worth a try. Oh, and it's, it's bottomless, right? Because it's only storing metadata in blob storage. So you can, do, you can run purview against petabytes of data. Great. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Appreciate sure. it. Um, for those of you on the on the call, we'll get this recording put out, and I'll get the um, um, and the slide deck from Tim, and we'll get it posted on Meetup, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, if you guys feel like it, you'll you'll get my slides. Join the Northern Virginia Data Platform Meetup. I join the Triad Meetup, and then also connect with me on LinkedIn. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Sure. Bye-bye. Okay. We'll see you.